All right, everybody, it's me, Gregory Manorino, not wearing a tie. Uh, this is my post-market wrap-up. This is going to be epic, um, seriously, and I hope I don't blow my stock off. September 25th, 2019. All right, let me, let me get comfortable here. Uh, <laughs> let's start off with the basics, as usual. It just sets my mind in the, uh, I guess, proper perspective. Uh, nice rally on Wall Street today. Nothing unbelievable, but a rally nonetheless. Uh, all the major indices were higher across the board. Several things sparked this rally, the good and the bad. We'll talk about the ugly later, a little, little different. But um, this morning, when I covered what was happening in the debt market. We had a, a hardcore sell-off in the debt market. I explained that to you. This sell-off went on throughout the day, and that cash that was leaving the debt market simply made its way into the stock market. It's a phenomenon that we do see uh, from time to time, especially, especially when you have certain people opening their pie holes. Uh, and we need to talk about those people, what they said, how it affected the market, and how it will affect the market moving forward. And then again, we'll get to the ugly, which really isn't so ugly, but it can be seen as ugly. All right, let's talk about, um, well, the good. It's not so good. Actually, I was nauseated, and you probably were too, if you had the displeasure in seeing uh, Fed President Bullard on CNBC talking to the lovely Sarah. Uh, yeah, they had a nice little lovey-dovey conversation. If you caught it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. There was this mutual kind of complimentary environment going on as the man was spewing, spewing sewage out of his pie hole. Let's talk about what that sewage was. Uh, actually, it was very, very good for the market, but for people that have an understanding of the rigging going on, it was stinking nuclear sewage, if there is such a thing, uh, probably, right? It sounds real. I, I don't know. Fallout? So, this guy was paraded out today on CNBC and explained that he was disappointed that the Federal Reserve did not cut the federal funds rate 50 basis points. He believes that the U.S. economy and the markets needed a 50 basis point cut. So he was not really thrilled about the 25 basis point cut. But he went on to explain that more cuts are coming. Now, who, who does that remind you of? Maybe the guy here not wearing a tie who has explained to you that a series of cuts are coming. I mean, you knew that already. I didn't need to tell you because you've been following this blog long enough to have a handle on this market. Now, that really wasn't the kicker, in my opinion, as to what come out of Bullard's pie hole, okay? Um, because he went on to explain that the Federal Reserve is expected you might want to sit down for this if you're not already, or pull over if you're driving and just listening to this. Um, he explained that the Federal Reserve is expected to begin expanding its balance sheet. Expanding its balance sheet. Now, why wouldn't he say inflating? Because it sounds better to say expand it. You see, the, the words here are chosen very, very uh, choicely. You have to understand that. Uh, if he would, if Fed Bullard would have said, "Well, the Fed is about to inflate its balance sheet," that doesn't sound as, I don't know, it has a different twist than to say going to expand it. Now, he went on to say further that there is demand from the banks for more capital. Oh, so what is he trying to explain to you that the banks maybe need to be recapitalized? Now, why would? That have to happen. Now, let's back up. We already understand that the Federal Reserve is engaged in this repo operation, 75, at, no, excuse me, at least underlined, $75 billion per day. It could be whatever they want it to. 
in this repo uh, operation for which there's a premium. I, I think most of you understand how the repo thing actually works, but there's a premium as well. So it could be, it's an unlimited fund that with a premium on top of it. Okay. What else do we know? There is at least 30 billion per day in the Federal Reserve purchasing longer term debt. And now we have Bullard explaining to us that the Federal Reserve, now let's get the word right, is going to be expanding its balance sheet. Oh, no, no, no. Is expected to expand, can't say inflate, its balance sheet. What are we talking about? We're talking about bailouts. We're talking about QE4 or QE5 as well, depending on how you want to look at it. So you make up your mind, your own mind here. But what the real question is, why? Isn't our economy so strong? Isn't, aren't things booming right now? Or are we in crisis? I think the answer is quite obvious. So watching the exchange between Sarah and Buller today literally made me want to puke. I'm not lying. Um, Look, I stayed calm through that. I really thought I was going to blow my stock off, but I didn't. I'm getting better. Now let's talk about, oh, let's talk about the bad, or maybe the ridiculous, or maybe it should be called the asinine, or this beyond, beyond belief. Well, today, um, we had, again, the recycling, or they're trying to recycle the China trade story. The president said that a deal with China, this is a quote, May come, may come sooner than people think. A deal with China may come sooner than people think. Very stock market positive. I cannot believe that the stock market is still buying this narrative. It's been two years. It's been two years that we've been hearing the same thing. And you know what we've gotten to show for it? Zero. We've had to increase tariffs on China. They've increased tariffs on us, although we're kind of both backing off on each other right now, for which, you know, no country is actually paying these tariffs. No one's writing a check. Uh, they're being paid by the importers and exporters on both sides, China and the United States, and those costs are being passed on to you. But you're not supposed to know that. You're supposed to think we're taking in billions. We're taking in billions uh, from China. And China's taking in billions from us, too, on the, on the tariffs they have on us. But you're not supposed to hear that part. Again, it's just, it, it, it doesn't exist. It's not real. And you, you're also not supposed to know that we have a $180 billion trade deficit with China, which pushed, uh, puts us in the negative. We're not taking in anything with regard to this trade war. Uh, China is taking in money. We're not. They have the trade surplus. We have a trade deficit. Very easy to understand. I've covered this before. But the narrative is being recycled. Uh, trade deal could come sooner than people think. So we have Fed Chair Bullard, Fed President I think he wants to be Fed Chair, I'll be honest with you. He probably will be at one point. But we have Fed President Bullard explaining how the Federal Reserve is going to keep pumping easy money into this market for as far as the eye can see. Rate cuts are coming. The Federal Reserve is going to be, let's get the word correct now, uh, expanding its balance sheet. market loves this. This is what gives the market an erection. I can say that word here because they say it on TV all the time. You know, with erectile dysfunction. It gives the market an erection. Now, when the president said that a deal may come with, with China sooner than people think, that is also like a little little shot of Viagra too. You know, so it gets you extra, you know, hard. Let's just say the word, okay? And um, anyway, so uh, again, it's it's... <laughs> You almost have to laugh, but that's what's being recycled again. The market loves this. So two things today really help push the stock market higher. Now let's talk about the ugly, and I want to outline this a little bit here. The ugly was precious metals uh, and, of course, cryptocurrencies. Now let's, let's talk about cryptocurrencies first. Now I know that there are there's a large crowd out here of people that do not like cryptocurrency. For whatever, they don't like the name of it. They don't like the way it sounds. They, they don't like to think about it. Um, but understand, whatever you want to call it, it is an asset that is bought and sold on an exchange. It could be called make up a word. In fact, let's call it make up a word. Um, people are buying and selling make up a word um, around the world. And there is a large group of people out there which continues to get larger, not smaller. 
uh, that are looking to engage in the buying and selling of make up a word, okay? Cryptocurrencies, all right? Let's not, let's, let's just call it what it is, okay? Um, and I can promise you that that group of people, which is getting larger, sees what happened over the past couple of days uh, with cryptocurrencies as a buying opportunity. All right. This is why I know it's going up. It may go lower, but it's going up. Uh, there's, there's just no doubt about it. There, are, there is more people around the world who do not want to be holding a central bank issued note. Uh, and would rather be holding make up a word. Uh, so that's why you can bet right now, literally, that um, longer term, we've seen this before with cryptocurrencies, they're going higher, okay? Now with regard to precious metals, yeah, these are outside the realm of central banks as well, although they do hoard it. That's why you should be hoarding it, all right? And use these as opportunities to get more for yourself. I can't stress this enough. We heard from Bullard, the good, or whatever you want to call them, make up a name, that the Federal Reserve is going to be cutting rates for more. The Federal Reserve is going to be, let's get the word right, expanding their balance sheet, bailing out the banks. Where does that cash come from? They add it to a digital screen uh, in epic amounts, which will eventually dilute the dollar, although the dollar did put on a nice gain today in relation to other currencies. I understand what's going on around the world. And this is why our president is so up in arms about the dollar being strong, talking about dollar intervention. He does not like it. And he's correct in that it does help multinational companies uh, when they are selling their products outside the U.S. No doubt about it. But it does not help you as a citizen of the United States who transacts in dollars. I can't remember the last time the president explained that to you, can you? Or any anybody besides me? I'm, I know there's other YouTube channels that probably do. I don't follow anyone. I don't listen to anyone. I have no idea what they're saying, thinking, believing, on, and I frankly don't care. Um, but it's not a hard concept to understand. Um, number one, the ugly. Why? Cryptocurrencies, this is a buying opportunity. Why? Number two, this is a buying opportunity for precious metals. If you just think about cryptocurrencies as an asset that's called whatever you want to call it, that is bought and sold on an exchange. Could be tulips. Okay, at one point it was, you know, tulip mania. Uh, whatever it might be. Yeah, that ended badly. This might end badly too. Who knows? But for now, the, the group of people that want to hold cryptocurrencies is getting larger. It is not getting smaller. Okay? It's that simple. So anyway, let's put this into perspective real quick. Stocks, nice rally on Wall Street today on the back of promises from Fed President James Bullard that more easy money was coming like you cannot believe. We're talking about a debt expansion cycle, again, like I've explained to you, that we've never seen before. It's going to eclipse everything that we, has ever come before. It. There's no doubt about it. Um, we have the United States President, again, recycling the narrative that a China deal is coming sooner. This time he changed the words a little bit. Sooner than people think. I doubt that. Um, but again, maybe the president will prove me to be wrong. It's only been two years since we've heard basically the same narrative. So uh, it can't possibly be sooner than people think because we've all been expecting it to happen for two years. You got that, right? Okay. I, I, I think you understand that. And with regard to um, cryptocurrencies, with regard to precious metals, I think if you follow this blog, you have a very clear understanding of both of these assets here and why I believe you should be holding both of them. You can't just be in one thing. You know, let me just say one more thing before I let you go. Um, again, I always talk about my website. It's completely free. Everything you need there is free to follow these markets. And my one, two, three boom system has got to be the easiest trading system on earth right now. It's not a day trading system. It's a swing trading system. And if you're even dreaming about learning how to trade this market, which is the gift that keeps on giving, I've explained this forever now, um, learn how to use that. Uh, click on the box above it which says tips. I, I show you some basic examples and then just follow it over time, over let's say a few weeks or a month or three months, whatever it might take you to, take you to understand how to read it 
you'll be able to predict what this market is going to do um, pretty easily. And if you're an intraday trader like myself, you have my quant system. It's also 100% free. Nothing in life will come to you without a little bit of work. You understand? You set these things up and you put time in and you allow it to come to you. All right? That's how you beat the game. Um, uh, it's not that hard. I mean, today, if you ask me, it was a beautiful day to trade. I'm almost embarrassed to tell you how much money I made in this market today. But it's not just me. I can promise you that there are people around the world, traders, that are doing the same thing. Why can't you? If you have a guy who's trying to tell you how to do it for free, show you how to capitalize on this thing that we are all caught up in from every possible angle. That's what it's all about for me. And I have promised you that I will not let you lose. And I won't. I promise you that too. From right now until I stop doing these video blogs. People, I love you all. That's the truth. Please share this video. Get it out there. I'm tired. See you in the morning.